All right, so here is the follow-up video. So far, so good. I've been liking this printer. I haven't had much problems with it actually. And I can proudly say it's working great and haven't had an issue with it. It's actually been a really good learning experience. So let's see what I've done here and then we'll move on and talk about the stuff I've printed and the stuff I've learned so far. So first of all, I ordered this amazing lock build 3D printing surface. I totally recommend getting one of these guys. I got this one for like 20 Canadian on Amazon. Uh, there's also another company called Beltac, but this is what I was able to get my hands on at that time. But this thing is just fantastic. So basically this will replace the painter's tape that you use usually. The one that came with it actually, it just got ripped up on uh, first use. So having this one is just fantastic. So when installing it, I had a couple times to rip it apart. I heated the bed and ripped it apart and put it back. So if you're worried about putting it in the wrong place, and having to take it out, uh, it's perfectly fine. So that's good because I took this thing apart three times and I laid it back in and didn't have an issue with it. Now, if you're worried about scratching it, do not worry. It is perfectly fine. There are some scratches, but I mean, just rub them off and they're fine. And every time I finish a build, I use these tools. I use this one to start with something. Sometimes I go ahead with this and if it's something really big, I'll go ahead with uh, this one. Now, this is just a scraper, but I've actually kind of sharpened it on the end. It's kind of dangerous, but just hold it like that and it can uh, knock out your belt, which is really good. So again, this is the first thing I would recommend getting once getting your printer. Next up, I went ahead and printed some uh, modifications for this thing, which make it look so much nicer and so much better. So first thing, I went ahead and printed this thing to uh, hold the spool line, which is really nice. It's got this hole and it's fantastic. I just love that part. And then I got some cool uh, outline cuts over here. Um, also, I'll leave links to these guys in the description. And I also have added a button here for inserting the line as well as a new cooler for the build. For this one, I kind of scraped the inside of it with a screwdriver until it fit perfectly. And here's a tip. When you're changing the line, make sure you preheat it, press it down, and then pull it really fast, as fast as you can while holding down on this to uh, change the spool. So see I have here red and black, so when I wanna change something, make sure you press it all the way when it's heated on 190 degrees and pull it as fast as you can so it doesn't get stuck. Because last time that happened, and what I ended up doing is taking apart the whole thing, the entire build, even the nozzle part, and heating it with my lighter and taking out the filament, which was uh, painful. I ended up breaking one of the fan blades on this one. I, I was running it and then while installing it at the same time, it was stupid. But anyways, printer works perfectly fine. Still, it's fantastic. I need to get a bigger table because this thing is like on the edge here. I uh, totally recommend getting like one of these guys. And make sure you don't point it at yourself. Make sure you're always holding it and just kind of going very slowly under it. I just use it to pry the things out. This is something I got from a laptop. And this is, uh, this is kind of dangerous. Don't. But definitely get one of these guys. It makes your life so much better. Now after each build, I go ahead and um, use some isopropyl alcohol. This is like a 70% and I go ahead and spray and quickly wipe down things and make sure the build surface is nice and clean. But anyways, let's move on over here and see what I've built. So the first thing I went ahead and built on this thing was actually this tray. You can see it is really nice. This was printed on the scotch tape. So you can see it's perfectly fun under, but after I ripped this apart, the scotch tape was gone and it was mangled and whatnot. But I had to stop the build midway or almost at the end because I actually forgot to put on the cooling nozzle here. In the end, this just got really jagged and really ugly really fast. And there were a whole lot of bumps that were affecting the nozzle and it was going up and down and making a lot of weird noises. So uh, make sure when you finish building this thing, make sure you plug this in into the cooler. But yeah, it, it is really solid. This is a full nice build. Uh, it's one of the preloaded files on the printer SD card and it's really nice. So now I just kind of use it when I finish building something and I put it right in here. Now back to the whistle here. Now this thing uh, seems like a lot of people have problems with printing it, but I used the white filament that came with the printer and it doesn't seem like that high quality. I'm not too sure. I haven't, this is the only thing I printed with the white filament. It failed. It had a bunch of holes here so it would never whistle. Then I went ahead and printed this again with the red and the bigger size, but uh, what happened is this is the other end of it. It got really messy because my printing surface got unleveled and the motors were actually not leveled as well. Now that's because I keep bumping into my 3D printer while entering and exiting the room because it's on the edge and it's messy. So make sure you put your printer somewhere safe. Otherwise, you're gonna have to recalibrate. So once I did recalibrate this thing, I went ahead and printed one more time, and now it is actually much better, and it is really loud. This was printed sideways on its side like so. Printing sideways and printing like this is a big difference. These two were printed like this. This one was printed on its side, you can see from here. And you can get rid of this white stuff by simply just using a lighter and uh, heating up the area. And 
and just like that most of it's gone. Now be careful of doing this on small parts because this is PLA and it melts really fast and it will become really malleable really fast. But this thing turned out really well for a functional build. So here's what it sounds like. It is extremely loud and if you're doing this in a room it's gonna sound even louder. So I usually put earmuffs on and uh, move on with it. So that's really cool. Next up I try to print uh, a uh, Knight Rider and believe it or not they use other wheels for the Knight Rider and this is the Knight Rider itself. I know, it's hilarious. And the reason that this happened was because I did not add any support material in the software. So in the software you gotta tell it if you want support material and then it will build support material around your build. And this is the second build here. Now I don't know what happened here, I'll figure it out later, but uh, overall it turned out pretty okay for a car model that is this small. Now this thing was supposed to be much bigger, like this big. And of course if you scale things down or scale them up in 3D printing, uh, some things get messed up or something's change. But overall, there was a lot of support material and you basically rip it out and that's the most satisfying part other than scraping things which I'll show you in just a bit here. But uh, yeah, yeah, here's what it looks like. It's pretty cool. But overall, it turned out pretty okay. Good enough to put somewhere and take a look at it. The same thing that happened here was to this uh, Back to the Future car. It's, it's hilarious. And when you are building a small car like this, make sure you take really good care of the wheels because they might rip along with the, um, the build adhesion material. Is this part right here. Now this can actually get peeled off like so and uh, really easily. And pretty much it is just a one layer of material to keep this thing nice and still as well to have good adhesion. Because when you're printing, you want to make sure that your build is stuck to the plate. And that's why you buy a good build plate. Not only it does help in adhesion, but it also helps the nozzle clean itself out. So if there's anything on the tip when it's building, eventually it will clean itself until it gets to the center and start building your model. Now this turned out pretty okay, except for this part right here. It is pretty jagged, but it is pretty fine overall. It turned out pretty okay. Now this is red, it doesn't look too good. The next colors I wanna get is yellow, brown, and beige. That's the one I would get. And beige is probably what I'm gonna like the most because is gonna reflect light the best in all situations for whatever I'm building. But yeah, it turned out pretty nice. I'm probably gonna keep the build adhesion plate around. It makes it look nice, um, more secure. I might take it out later, but um, I'll show you what it looks like when you're taking this out. And here's an example of the build adhesion again. This is a build of a pyramid I stopped midway. And here you can see it again, the build adhesion goes around and the software automatically does this for you. It makes it to the correct size and whatnot. And you can see how clean the build is here. Now I stopped it. This would have taken forever to build. I'm kind of building small things just to learn first and then I'll go into big builds. But next up we have infill. And that's basically how much material is inside the build itself. This Pikachu right here, I built it with zero infill. So inside there's no material whatsoever. It's only on the outside wall. Rock solid, it's not going anywhere and it is perfectly fine. Now if you build this in 100%, there's gonna be a lot of wasted material that you're not gonna see and benefit from too much. But anyways, I think this was 20 or 25%. But overall, thankfully I stopped it this way and I can show you guys what infill looks like. Oh yeah, here's the Pikachu once again. And uh, I believe this thing failed also. And one thing happened here was the build plate was dirty and this thing just pretty much slipped and or the uh, printer wasn't calibrated. So that's when I printed this again and it turned out much, much better. All right, so I kind of like to build things that are in a really small scale, actually way too small, and just to see what it looks like before I go ahead and build a larger scale. And it looks pretty cool. It's really tiny. Now what I have in my hand here is something for the knife I have here that I printed out. This is gonna be my unboxing knife for the upcoming videos. And um, overall it turned out pretty okay. This was perfect right here. This, this handle right here was perfect. This was not too perfect. What happened here, I also didn't print any support material, which I should have. And what happened is this was all jagged and lines and lines were coming out. And one satisfying thing about building, I like to uh, kind of clean up things and just kind of scrape off parts. And then I get my sandpaper and sand it off and make a nice edge here. But overall it turned out really good. Uh, this was printed flat. This was printed on side and that's why it's also messed up here. I cut too much of my razor blade. I might just rebuild this handle again. But um, I got two screws right here from my magical screw box and I got them in there and they work perfectly fine. So it is actually overall a pretty nice unboxing knife. We'll see how it does in the next video where I actually start using this thing. But um, it looks pretty cool. There are a bunch of different knives you can print and you can see it is, it is wobbly of course. But should be fine to just break tape. It cracked over here, but that's fine. I'll print this thing flat as well maybe and see how it does. But yeah, overall, knife turned out really nice. Oh, and one more thing is, um, this is what it looks like. So you toss that in the garbage. So yeah, look forward to using it in the next video. All right, and then next we have this thing and this was a stereo projection um, kind of thing. So basically 
you shine light on it, and this specific one will uh, have a grid laid out on the table. So let's turn off the lights and see what it looks like here. All right, so I got my phone right here, and basically you shine the light directly on top, and you can see what's happening under it. You get a grid line right under it. Now, it looks pretty cool, and that's about it. Now, in camera, it looks really cool. In real life, it's okay. I mean, that's about it. Now, one thing I might do is just get an LED and put it inside of here and just pretty much make it a standalone thing. I mean, yeah, it's, that's it. And there are different type of stereo projections. They all have different shapes and whatnot, but there's this one cool thing I want to try later on. And what that one looks like after you build it is you get a picture and you incorporate it into the build somehow. And then when you shine light on it, just like this one, instead of getting boxes or whatever, you actually get a full picture of whatever you built. Now, basically what it is, it's similar to this thing, except you actually can have a picture displayed when you shine a light in it. So I don't know if this printer can do it, but I'm gonna try it out and then show you guys the results in hopefully the next video when I do try it out. And finally, something you guys have been looking at probably the whole video, some of you, um, and that is a Team Valor Pokemon keychain. Now this thing actually turned out really well. Now I don't know what it looks like on the other side, but, but from the looks of it, everything here looks perfect. This thing looks like a perfect build. Now I tried building this without the supports and it turned into a big mess, which is the material that is gonna fill the gaps between the space on the build surface and the flooring parts. Yeah, we're gonna take it apart together and see what it looks like. Now this is gonna be really satisfying to take this apart, so let's see how it does. So basically you can just rip it apart like so and it will reveal the build itself. Now you wanna be careful. All right, so far so good. All right, so I managed to get everything out, and uh, this is the material that's left of it. And I really didn't have any high hopes for the uh, chain itself, but I gotta say, I'm gonna put some pressure on it here, and it is not breaking. It is really solid. So you can actually use this as a keychain if you really want it, but um, I could have been more careful and saved the last link, which links these two parts together. I could super glue it back on, but I think I might just use a regular metal keychain uh, with this thing. Who knows? But overall, the detail on this thing is really good, and it doesn't seem like there's anything that is distorted. Now, there is some stringing around here and there, but that's easily fixed by just ripping it apart or cutting out the razor blade and uh, polishing it up with a lighter. That's what I like to do. And But overall, it turned out really good, so I'm really happy with this. Really happy with the 3D printer and everything that it printed so far. Everything looks really nice. The learning process was great. Building it was great. Understanding how it works, what kind of things you need to learn about. Everything was really fun and exciting while printing with this 3D printer. And the quality that it built in is actually pretty good. And uh, I just need to tweak some settings and make it better. And that's all part of the learning process. So yeah, guys, do I recommend this printer? If you like DIY and learning about 3D printing and whatnot, this, I believe, is a great way to start. It is cheap. You do it yourself and the build quality is really nice. And again, the learning process is fantastic, but if you don't like doing that, then just get one of those expensive ones if you got the money to spare. Well, yeah guys, that is pretty much it for this video. Stay tuned for more videos about this thing, such as modifications that I might do to it, things that I might build, and um, yeah, that is pretty much it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, everyone.